It's official, Andy and I, we've come to Marrakesh and we've bought a rug. About five years ago, we purchased a house that was through probate and it had not been touched since the 1960s. So we spent quite a few years upgrading it and our living room's at the point now where we're ready to do the soft furnishings. It obviously wasn't the main factor, but it certainly helped contribute to why we wanted to come to Morocco for this October half term trip. And ahead of coming out here, we had so many questions about the whole rug buying process. And so I thought by putting out a video like this one, sharing some of the footage from our rug buying process, if you two are thinking of coming here to do the same thing, hopefully this video will be helpful for you. How will I find a rug that I like? When we entered into the shop, it was stacked really high with rugs that were completely folded up, allowing for you to only see just a smidgen of what the rug looked like. And at first it was feeling very overwhelming as we were being led into the shop and I was thinking how on earth are we going to be able to pick things out? The way in which the process works is they will take you into a room that's got some relatively comfortable seating. You sit down and they will bring out a whole range of different rugs. We were first of all shown Islamic style rugs, which were really not to our taste. They then added onto those on the floor with further ones such as those from the High Atlas, those from Jewish communities, and also those from the Berber communities. We were then able to feed back and say which rugs we were a little bit more interested in and which rugs we were less interested in. Once they started to get an idea of our preferences over design, they started to bring out more rugs of the designs that we really did like. Once the floor was filled with the designs that we really liked, they then started to ask about the sizings. So it's really important that you do have an idea in your head of the size of rug that you want so that you're not wasting their time at this point. The salespeople would then take away the rugs that we'd lost interest in and it just helped for us to be able to visualise just the ones that we were interested in and be able to narrow it down so it went from a large number to a smaller number to a smaller number and for us it got right the way down until we just had two rugs to be able to choose between. Another question that lingered over our heads, and I will be the first to put up my hands and say we perhaps didn't do this the best way around, is to know how much you should be paying for a rug. Here in Marrakesh, there's something called the Ensemble Artisanal. It's a market that's got things like leatherware, ceramics, jewellery, some silverware, but also carpet shops. And unlike in the souks, everything has a price on it, so it means that you don't need to barter. If you pop along to one of those, it can give you a bit of a, an idea as to what might be a truthful price to be paying. And of course, if you really don't want to have to barter for a rug, you could just purchase one at that market. In comparison to the rug shops that we've seen in the souks, they had a much smaller selection, so you might find it more difficult to find a rug that you really like there. Once you've got an idea of what the prices are, you can come back into the souks and just have a much more confident idea as to the sort of price that you are willing to pay. The price of the rug is going to depend on a number of different factors, but the easiest one as a tourist to pick up on will be the design. The more intricate the design is, the longer it's taken for someone to weave it and therefore the higher the price is going to be. The more simple the design, particularly the really on-trend ones that are predominantly beige with perhaps a black or grey geometrical design going across it, obviously are a lot more simple, therefore less time consuming and therefore cheaper. There are other factors such as the materials and also the skill of the weaving, but of course unless you really know your carpets it can be very difficult to know this. Therefore my advice would be just to go with your heart and ask yourself how much do you really love this carpet and if it is something that you absolutely love, have a price in your mind, but whatever you do, don't let off to the salesperson that you absolutely love this carpet and that you must have it. For us, we kept on umming and ahhing between a number of different rugs and whilst we didn't go in with this tactic in our mind, it seemed to work out quite well for us because it meant that when it got to the point where we said, I think this one's our favourite out of all of them, and we then asked what the price was because you don't want to be asking the price of every single one, you only want to ask when there is a carpet that you're really interested in. They weren't sensing, like they brought it out and I'm like, wow, this is amazing. I must have it because I think if I'd done that, we would have been in a much weaker negotiation point. Instead, we'd been saying, oh, well, there's this one and there's this one and oh, they're both really nice and there's not too much difference between them and there, there really wasn't, which I think then made it a little bit more difficult for them because they could see that our heartstrings hadn't been hooked by one particular one. 
therefore it would probably be very easy for us to go to a different rug shop and also find rugs not too dissimilar that we also would be quite happy having. So if there's one, don't show it. Make it seem like there's a few that you're interested in. When you do get to the point of picking the rug that you most like, ask them for the price. I think we need to talk about the dreaded topic now. Yeah, I don't speak, my dear, huh? How much? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> don't you say what price you're willing to pay. Get them to do it first. For the negotiations on price, know what tactic you want to use before you go in. For us personally, we chose to just halve the price that the rug seller had suggested to us and then we were going to stick at that. We have read from others that you can go much, much lower than that and don't be afraid to offend them. I'm not going to be insulted. You're not trying to make friends here, it is almost like a business transaction and sometimes people do that and they know to expect it and then naturally this person goes in at a very low price so the rug seller says, oh no, definitely not and they'll lower their higher price and that person moves up and you know, you, you find somewhere in the middle. You decide on the tactic that you want to go with and just make sure that you stick with that. I'd also throw in to be aware that as well as you having your own sales tactic, your salesperson will also have their own sales tactic and it's going to differ from person to person. Try if you can and read the room, understand what's going through their mind and then use it to your advantage. What we picked up on is that our salesperson really seemed to be aiming things at me. I will throw it as a birthday present for her. Say something, young man. Mm. Oh, yeah. Glad you call me young. Well, you're, you're, well, you're so young man. <laughs> and it seemed like he was trying to get my heartstrings hooked so that when it came to the negotiation of the price, that I was so in love with the rug that I would then turn to Andy and say to him, oh, please, I really want it. Please pay that particular price. But we'd agreed to stick together as a team. And so as soon as he said that price, which was absolutely astronomical, even I was standing there going, whoa, no, that's far too much money. I cannot justify spending that much money. And because both of us were saying that, it then made it much more difficult for the salesperson to use me as a way to be able to team up against Andy to force him to have to pay a little bit more money. So if you're going in as a couple or as a family, just make sure that you stick together as a team. I would ask that if you're finding this video helpful, I'd be ever so grateful if you could just give it a quick thumbs up as it will help the video spread to more people and it might help more who are coming to visit Morocco. Once we'd negotiated the price of the rug and we went through into the owner's office and Andy made the payment, the owner of the rug shop said to him that he should tip the person who I guess I'm giving him the job title of the rug handler. He didn't speak any English, but it was his job to get all of the rugs off of those high piles and to open them out for us. And if we weren't happy with them, to fold them back up and lug them back up. And the amount of rugs that were brought out for us, he really was breaking a sweat. So for us personally, we were happy to tip. I tell you, you sign here, please. And then I, don't forget to give him a good tip for this oh, guy, you know. Give him but what came as a little bit of a surprise is that when we gave the money to the seller who we'd been conversing with in English, he then came back to us saying that he wanted more money. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. but then you can give us a Yes, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. No, it's a split. I, I only have a hundred, so it's just that. No, madam, it's not only, please. Yes, yes. Please, it's not only, please. We work hard to get stuff for you. Thank Look, you. if you have 10 pounds or 5 pounds, please. In the end, we just felt like because the other gentleman who didn't speak English had really, really broken a sweat with the amount of rugs that he was hauling about the place, we ended up going and giving him the extra tip money instead of giving it to the salesperson. We caught up with our intrepid guide because we bought this on the last day of our tour. So at the farewell dinner, we asked him if tipping within a rug shop is standard. And he said it most definitely is not. And that staff in rug shops should be paid a fair enough wage by the owners of the rug shops and that of course if we felt like we wanted to give a tip we always could so I'd say the same to you if you feel like 
the work that they've done whilst you've been in the shop is tip worthy, then give it. But apparently it's not standard practice to do so. Have a good idea as to how you want to get this rug home. From our experience, it seemed like we had one of three options. Option one was to take it home on the aircraft with us. Option two was to take it out of the shop with us and take it to the local post office and post it ourselves. And option three would be to use their courier service. For us, we went with option one and that's because we bought a camel hair rug so it folds down really quite small and I'm almost certain that we're just gonna be able to slot it underneath the seat in front of us. For option two, you might wish to go to the post office and just find out the costs of how much different items weigh in different sizes of items so that you can then do a comparison between their courier service and posting it through the post office yourself. But the other thing that the post office might provide you with is just peace of mind of knowing that the package that's going to turn up at home, because it's been posted by you, it's definitely the rug that you've purchased. Because I have heard some horror stories of people who have purchased one rug and when it's turned up at home through the courier service of the rug company it's been very much an inferior rug or a much smaller rug and people have been left very disappointed and the time and the effort that it would take to try and follow up and chase up the company and get the real rug to you is probably going to be far more time consuming than you just posting it at the post office yourself. If you do decide to go with their courier service, not that we've gone through this process, but ahead of us purchasing the rug because we didn't know how big it was going to be. And obviously if we went with one of the fluffy lambs wool ones, we probably would have needed to have posted at home. We were told, take as many photographs of it as possible and try and mark it perhaps with your name or some kind of initials, somewhere that's hidden away so that when it's in your home, you're not gonna be able to see it, but somewhere that's obvious enough that you can check it when it turns up at your home so you know that it is in fact the rug that you purchased. What may be worth noting is that if you're new to this channel, I am a full-time secondary school teacher, so it is not in the nature of my work to negotiate on prices of things. I certainly don't work in a sales type environment. Andy's similar whilst he does work in corporate. He works as a financial analyst. And so again, he's never having to do any of those negotiations. So we might not necessarily be giving the best advice, but we thought that it might be good just to show our experience and share our experience. But if you're sat here watching it thinking, oh my goodness, what were you thinking doing this? Or I would give these tips. I would love if you could just leave in the comments underneath anything extra that you could add. And if there's anything that I've said that you disagree with, please do share it because it would be great if other people who are watching this video could also go through those comments and just pick up a few more tips. I hope that this video has been really helpful and if it has, you might want to subscribe so that you can see more of our Moroccan adventures. We'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.